Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com, and we are here today at the new Tommy LaPuma Center for Creative Arts, and we're here with the one, the only Tommy LaPuma. Thank you so much for meeting with us, Mr. Well, LaPuma. Thomas, my pleasure. You know, I don't know how to introduce you. You're a record producer, you're a record executive, you're a groundbreaking artist. How do you see yourself? As a, um, as a barber from uh, 17th and Yuga. <laughs> Talk about the barber shop. Because I, was, I mentioned to someone we're going to be talking, he said, make him tell you the barbershop stories. <laughs> well, you, your father would, what, drop you off at the barbershop? Well, no that's, no, that's when I was still going to barber college. Oh. It was on Prospect and Huron, you know, that, the building that comes to a point. Exactly, right. So he dropped me off on Huron, and I walked up the stairs and right down to Prospect and take the wrap at home. <laughs> you had better things to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, you know, actually, I... I had a shop of my own on 17th and Euclid in the wow. Keith building. In the Keith building, wow, and, right downtown. Uh, and that's, you know, as fate would have it, that's how I, I got in the record business because all of the radio stations were right in that right area. around and there. Playhouse Square, WJW, ERE was on 13th, WHK was on 40-something in Euclid. So I had a friend who had just gotten into the record business, who was working for a, a record distributor, and started bringing up all of the disc jockeys and and uh, uh, record promoters and so forth. And, uh, you know, I said, wow, this is something I'd, I'd love to get into. And uh, yeah. somebody took me seriously and, and hired me. I just, you know, originally it was just, I was packing records in the back room. Right, right. And then uh, he gave me a job as a um, promotion man. Sure. And I got a bit of a rep and, and I, uh, I ended up being transferred to, uh, actually, so Cleveland, who did it too. too uh, uh, Bob Scaff, who moved to Los Angeles, and oh. hired me for Liberty Records as a, a local promotion man in LA. Sure, sure. And from you know, the rest was history. I, I just started producing records, and and all from Cleveland, right? All from your background here in Cleveland. Is there something yeah. in the water here that seems to be good music just comes out of this town? What what is oh, it? Well, particularly then, you know. Uh, look, 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 let me tell you something. In the fifties, forties, and fifties. Cleveland was just a hotbed. Yeah. Uh, a lot of records broke out of here. Right, Bill right. Randall. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. We had some great DJs, right, with oh, some good Bill ears. Bill Randall, Phil McLean, uh, 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 Johnny Holiday. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There was just a lot of great. Uh, uh, and this was even before the Alan Freeds of the world came and, through, uh, correct? Alan Freed was the king, and Alan yeah. ended up becoming a very close friend of mine. We, right, we were, right. I was with him, you know, Several years before he passed. And, no kidding. And, uh, I, I didn't know him when I lived here. I mean, I was a big fan of his. You know, oh, I used to watch, okay. listen to the Moon Dog show every night. But then you got in the business. And I got in the, in the business, business, and by that time he had uh, been sort Moved of thrown York. out of the business because of uh, payola and payola so forth. Payola scandal. Yeah, and, so um, sad. But he moved out to L.A. and he was living in someone's house in Palm Springs, and we met and became became tight. And of course, Cleveland known for rock and roll because of that, and, uh, the <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But uh, you really followed and, and helped develop the, the jazz field for so many years, right? How did your interest start there? I was into, I was a very serious bebop guy, going back to 17, 18 years old. And uh, I, you know, just, uh, I, I, I loved, uh, from the first time I heard Charlie Parker, I, wow. You know, thought I had just gone to heaven. So, so you know, that's when I, I got into bebop. But I had been into pop music prior to that. You know, I was I, into pop music. Meaning I, that's what I listened to mm -hmm. on the radio. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking back in the '40s with Joe Stafford, and Harry James, and uh, so forth. Sure. And, it was, and then I, I found the R&B station here in town, which was WJMO. JMO. Mm -hmm. I was about nine or ten years old. And, mm -hmm. uh, I Different just, sound. Uh, that was something that just I, I never quite got over that and and became a huge rhythm and blues fan. Right. And um, that's, that's, you know, basically how I got the, you know, the roots of what it was that I ultimately ended up doing. And you've made a tremendous gift here to, to try c $3 million to help, not only with this building here, but also for scholarships. Mm -hmm. What are your plans? Because it was interesting that you're going to want to stay involved, maybe teach some classes here. Oh, yeah. No, what no, are, really what are you planning to do? Well, it, it, you know, we haven't really come up with a schedule at this point, mm -hmm. but I would imagine that it's going to be not just uh, teaching some master classes, but I'm going to have friends of mine come in, you know, uh, from engineers to uh, wow. 
business affairs people just to give the students a good grounding in what is important for them to, to get into the music business. Because you have worked really with so many of the, of the greats, uh, everyone from Barbara Streisand to Paul McCartney here in 2012. How do, you, how do you do that? I mean, what is that like as, as an engineer, as a, now, of course, you're a record executive, but what, what does that feel like when you're in the room with some of these, these people that you come at it as a fan, right? You, you love the music. Well, I had been. I was a huge Beatles fan, but uh, well, as it turns out, Paul's a very down-to-earth individual. I mean, for someone of his, of his stature wow. to be as down-to-earth is just incredible, I think. And... Um, you know, you get to a point, I've been doing this for 45 years, Thomas. That's right. <laughs> and and I, you, don't get, you get to the point where, you know, artists, they, they smell fear. Mm. And you just can't, you know, show or, be, you know, you have to give them a sense of confidence. Right, right. And, um, you know, that was something that I, I guess, you know, Paul appreciated. And, and also, I think he knew that this particular genre that we were working in, I, I knew a lot about. Yes. And it made him feel comfortable. Right. Yeah. And of course, it was Diana Krall and her band, and yeah. of course, you've, you've been producing her for years. Since 19, uh, late 94. Yeah. So jazz has changed a lot in the years that since you got, first got involved with it over the past Very 40, 50 so, years yeah. or so. What, what, how are things different now? Because the jazz really went through an area where it was very popular. And, well, and it was very popular, but also you had... See, all of the elements were just so different. You had big bands. You had... There was in this interplay going between musicians and... You know, there were clubs then. There was a, a, right. a plethora of clubs for, for musicians to work at and, and this interplay. And you had guys who ultimately ended up having... Style. It was, you know, when you heard Zoot Sims, you knew it was Zoot Sims. When you heard Stan Getz, you knew it was Stan. Mm. I think one of the things that are missing today is you just don't get a sense of style with with a lot of musicians. And I don't want to generalize because mm -hmm. there are some mm -hmm. that that you can recognize. Diana being one, and she's right. very recognizable. Sure. But here you know it's Diana. Crow. Right. First note almost. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. How do you advise artists? Because I'm sure you're in that business a lot now. What do you tell them? I, I don't. I, I, I can only advise them at a point when they're asking, or when the right moment comes up to to right. advise. You can't like pontificate or give them a sense that you're, uh, you know, listen to me, kid. You know, because I know what I'm doing. And that's that doesn't work. Right. How about young kids? How about uh, young musicians that are just getting started or want to get into the business? What do you advise them? The business has really, really changed here in the past just 10, 15 years or so. Not much of a business anymore, really, right? No, no it's not. Well, it's different. It's a, you, know, you need a completely different toolbox now. It's a completely different uh, set of uh, rules and, and uh, implements that you use. You know, it used to be radio and getting your record on the radio was the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Radio isn't that important anymore, unfortunately. It's, now you have to, you know, you have to either get on a television show, you have to be able to get, uh, to, you have to travel, uh, work, uh, open up for a, for a main attraction. It's just a completely different way of going about it, making a video and getting and putting it on YouTube, and suddenly, if you're lucky enough that it becomes viral, and uh, right, then right. It's, it's something. Paul did a big thing on iTunes, right? Well, with, with Johnny Depp. Uh, uh, well, yeah, that, and also he. Uh, have you seen the uh, video with uh, Johnny Depp and uh, Natalie Portman? No, I haven't seen that. No, he he did where Johnny and Nat Natalie are uh, are doing um, sign language oh. as he's singing his song "My Valentine." Oh wow! They're doing sign language, and then Johnny actually played the guitar. You see, he's a very accomplished guitar player. That's what I've heard. Yeah, absolutely incredible. Yeah. So I understand you're going to be talking with some of the students here while you're in town this week. We're dedicating the building here. Yes, yeah. Congratulations for all that. Thank yeah, you for taking well, the time. It's my pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you for much. your gift and, and your presence here in, in Cleveland. It's a real honor. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Lapuma. Right. Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in cool Cleveland.